Who's the real monster? Frankenstein was published 200 years ago, and this is a question that has been debated ever since. The two leading candidates are Victor Frankenstein, the college student who creates a creature out of dead human body parts, and the creature who becomes a monster, goes on a killing rampage, and even goes after its own creator. Mary Shelley herself is a very interesting woman. She wrote this novel when she was still a teenager, and she was what we would now call a pretty troubled teenager. She ran away with a married man when she was about 16. She did drugs. She had a child born out of wedlock. And then in this competition that she was engaged in with some of the leading writers of the day, she wrote this ghost story, Frankenstein, which has continued to let us ask, who's the real monster ever since? I was actually a chemistry major as a college student, and the character of Victor Frankenstein really resonated for me because he was doing cutting-edge science, and yet he didn't seem to be aware of the social consequences of the research that he was doing. Victor Frankenstein was probably modeled on a real-life chemist named Humphrey Davy, who gave very exciting public lectures that involved explosions and great smells from chemical experiments. The novel probably was also a response to very exciting galvanic experiments that involved hooking up electrodes to dead bodies. 200 years later, Frankenstein is still involved in discussions that we are having about the life sciences and STEM fields in general. If you think about gene editing technologies, patient consent, about neuroprosthetics, Frankenstein still remains very relevant to questions about how to conduct those areas of inquiry responsibly. Today, Frankenstein offers students and scholars a wonderful opportunity to bring two conversations together. One has to do with the social consequences of recent exciting developments in STEM fields, and the other has to do with a conversation on diversity and inclusion, especially the mechanisms of social othering. The creature is the quintessential outsider, and a lot of the research and creativity has centered on trying to use the novel to imagine how it is that creatures who are born innocent become monsters. So who is the real monster? Humanity scholars have encouraged us to rethink that whole question and to ask instead, what makes monsters? How does it feel to be a monster? And perhaps most importantly, what do you and I do that helps make monsters?